Hello, in this video I'm going to be talking to you about the Honeywell T3R wireless programmable room thermostat. So I'm going to show you what you get in the box and then how you can set it up, how you can program it, all the additional features it can do. I'm going to show you the parameters where you can change things like changing it from a 24 hour clock to a 12 hour clock from a five and two day programmer to a seven day programmer. And then hopefully I will cover everything which this programmer can possibly do. At the end of the video, I'll be showing you how you can wire up the receiver unit. And you can see I've already got this one wired up. You can see the little light there is flashing and I'll show you what that light means and then how you can operate it and how it integrates with your thermostat. Now this video is all about the T3R. Now you might have noticed there is also the Honeywell T4R. Now you might be wondering what the difference is between the three and the four. Well, I have made a video which goes through the differences between these two programmers. But uh, just an idea that this program here the t3 this one comes out at about 80 pounds and the t4 comes out around 115 pounds so you can see there is a fair bit of difference between these programmers if you do want to know how to program or operate this t4r then of course i have made a video all about doing that and finally if you find your thermostat is no longer talking to your receiver then they have lost their bindings and you've got a red light flashing on this unit and a warning symbol in the thermostat and i've made a separate video all about how to rebind these two units and that is not written down in the manual if you are looking to purchase one of these programmers then i have left links in the description below taking you to all the programmers i have mentioned along with links to all my videos my name is Mark Ballard and I've been a gas registered engineer for over 20 years. The aim of my channel is to help you with your central heating and your plumbing. If you find my video helpful in any way, then please give me some feedback by clicking on that thumbs up. And of course that will help others to find this video. And of course, if you enjoy my video, you can click subscribe. And if you want to receive a notification the next time I upload a help video, then click on that bell. And of course, share the video with your friends. I'd like to say a really big thank you to everybody who's bought me a cup of coffee and left a donation in my toolbox fund. It's really appreciated and it helped me to make more videos, which will hopefully help you. Right, now let's get on with this video and show you how to set up this programmer. All the links throughout this video can be found in the description below, at the end of the video or in the cards above. As you saw in my intro, there are several different models. You do have a T3 and there's the T3R and obviously there's a T4 and a T4R. Now the difference between the, the R's is just to stand for its radio, so it's wireless. So this unit is a wireless unit. Now you can just get the T3. Now the idea of a T3 is it would replace a room thermostat. So if you have a thermostat like this, okay, and it, it's on the wall and it's hardwired in, then you can just get the T3 three and you can just take this unit off and then you would put the T3 or T4 in its place and wire it in. And obviously it, then it's not wireless, you can't move it around, it's fixed to the wall, but it is a very simple option and it is cheaper than the uh, wireless version. Okay, so open a box, let's see what we've got inside. Now, first thing I noticed when I open this, this box is that it's got this nice little wiring guide on, on here. So for your, uh, if you want to do a bit of DIY and you want to see the, it nice and easy, straightforward, or even if you're a staller, it's nice and simple, straight there, and we don't have to go looking through the instructions. Now we do have the instructions here. Uh, we've got a user guide here for the user. And of course we do have the installation guide. Uh, the instructions for the user, I must say they're not exactly brilliant. Okay, I did have a look through them to see what they, they said. And um, there's, there's lots of writing here. It looks like it's telling you a lot. But in fact, all this writing here, the dark bit is the bit which is in English. All the West is in foreign. So it is just a very simple step-by-step -step picture style um, programming guide. Okay, so, uh, but we don't need to worry about that because I'm going to show you how to program it anyway. So that's your uh, user instructions. Then we've got two AA batteries for your programmer. Open it up. Then we've got the receiver unit. Now this is the receiver unit which will go next to the um, boiler or next to the con controls. So this will just wire in next to that. You've got the connections at the back there or on through here. Um, and then I just so you know, if you have the old CM series where you have this receiver unit, this unit is a little bit bigger, okay? It must be at least uh, maybe maybe that much bigger. So a finger and a finger, I should say, is bigger, but it does have a screw on the front, uh, which does mean you can get to a lot better and it's a lot easier to wire up. And I'm, I'm gonna go through some basic wire on you so you can see what that's like inside uh, uh, towards the end of the video, okay? Then we got the obviously the programmer just here. I'll take the more cardboard out. We got some um, 
of these panels for, uh, for the stand and the wall plate. And then we've also got some screws here. So the screws, you've got this little uh, pack here. This is to screw the wires in and hold them tight within the, um, uh, the receiver unit. And then we've also got a whole pack of little screws here for screwing obviously the uh, receiver unit to the wall. And also if you want to screw the um, programmer to the wall. And then we got the, the stand. Now we've got some brackets here. Now this bracket here, this is so you can fix the bracket, um, you can fix the programmer to the wall. So you just screw this to the wall somewhere and you can see that will just fit onto there and then slides on, clips into place and then that will just sit on your wall quite nicely and uh, you can put that position that wherever you want to. Usually uh, in, in the cooler room, usually in the hallway, quite often is where you put it, but you can put it anywhere. If you've got kids uh, who are gonna be uh, knocking you at your stand over, or if you've got a, a, an older person who keeps losing it or dropping it, then you might wanna fix it to the wall so it's uh, nice and secure and it's not gonna get broken. Uh, hallways where I, I usually put them and um, I usually screw it to the, to the staircase because uh, that's nice and easy there. It's wood, you screw it straight in nice and easily and it just hooks on, onto there. Okay, so that's that wall plate if you wish to use Use that and then we've got the stand here uh, but this is the most common option which I, I use this one is uh, nice and simple it's nice and neat fairly sturdy and then you can put the programmer anywhere so when you come to clip this together you've got a little uh, clip here a little mark should I say a little lug and then on the bottom here you've got a little lug there so if you just put that at the front there and then you put this here into the slot and then you slide it along push it in and just watch that little clip there that just clips in like that if it's not going all the way in make sure you push it and a little click and now it's on there and then we can just take the programmer and again you can see that just slots onto there clips on and then we can just push and position this programmer uh, or thermostat programmable thermostat whichever you want to call it you can position that anywhere in your house when positioning your thermostat it's recommended to install it 1.2 meters off the floor uh, but basically you just don't want to put it near any heat sources like radiators, TVs or near the sun. And of course, don't put it in any drafts where it's going to get a cold breeze blowing on it, which is going to affect it and turn your heating on and off when you don't want it to. So this Honeywell T3R is a really nice unit. I've been using Honeywell for a really long time, many, many years, and they've always produced really good products. And uh, this one is no difference. These programmers are nice and simple to use. They're nice and intuitive. You just follow the on-screen instructions and then that should allow you to set it up completely. One of my tests when I'm trying out a new program is just to take it straight out of the box and see if I can set it up without having to look at the instructions. And that certainly was the case with this programmer. Now just going back to the programmer, on the front here we've got a nice door. You can see the door just opens up and it clicks open. So whether you've got it on a stand or on the wall, the door just stay open so you can easily access the buttons and see the screen. Right, now let's get on with setting it up and programming it. So here we are, here's the programmer, and uh, we're just gonna open it up and insert the batteries now. Uh, they just go in the front here, so we just pull this cover here down, like that, and then we have two AA batteries, and they just fit in the front here, and it's clearly marked which way around they go, but just in case, you put the plus at this end here, so that one goes into there, like that, and then the other one goes into here, like that. Let me just put the cover back on. Carefully like that. And there we go. Now when the manual, it says the battery life is around about two years. And now we can see the program is now uh, it's just starting up on its normal startup. So this is what comes on every time you replace the batteries or you put batteries in it. Now it does have a memory, so it will remember what you set last time, but uh, from new, this is where it's gonna come up. So you just follow the menu through and it's pretty straightforward. So as you can see here now, it's saying year. So obviously we need to change the year. It's now 21, I'm gonna change that to year and then press tick. And then you can then change the month. I'm gonna go back or we can go forwards, whichever. I'm gonna go to one, you press tick again. Okay, and then we set the day, and now we're gonna set that to 19. Like that, and then we press tick. And then we set the hours. Now you can see that this is a 24 hour clock. Now we can change it to a 12 hour clock in the parameters, and I'll show you how to do that later in the video. But for now, we're gonna leave it as 24 hour, and then I'm gonna set the minutes like this, and I set minutes, press tick, and now that's the setup saved.
Now in the installation manual, it tells you to install the receiver unit first. Now I've not done that because I wanted to show you these two warning symbols just here. So you've got this warning triangle and you have your wireless connection symbol flashing in the top right corner there. These are flashing because it's not got a connection with the receiver unit. So if you ever have these symbols flashing in your display, then you'll need to come and check and see why you haven't got a connection with your receiver unit. Also, when you lose your connection with your receiver box, the light on the front of the box will start flashing red. Now, it's not really clear, but that is flashing red there. And whenever you see that flashing, it means that you've lost your connection between your programmer and your receiver box. It might just be that the battery is just need changing. Later in the video, I'll show you how to wire up the receiver unit. Now I'm going to turn on the receiver unit and then we'll see how it operates, how the programmer connects to it and controls it. I'm now going to switch the receiver unit on. You'll now see there is a green flashing light in the top right hand corner. When the programmer connects to it, it'll turn to a solid green light and the wireless symbol will stop flashing in the programmer display. Now normally when you insert the batteries, the programmer will connect to the receiver unit straight away. I already have the programmer on, so I need to make the programmer send a signal. I'm going to do that by turning it to manual and they're going to put the temperature up. So the programmer will then send a signal to the receive unit telling the heating to come on. And there we are, it's come on, the green light's turned solid green, the warning triangle's gone away and you can see we've got a solid connection in the top right hand corner of the display. Now, if at any time you lose your programmer or you break your programmer or the batteries go flat, then you can bring your heating on by pushing the button which is on the front of the receiver unit. Now, when you push that button, that will then bring the boiler on and you'll see whenever the programmer is telling the heating to come on, that little green light will also come on. Once you've wired in your receiver unit and before you turn your programmer on, you should test that the receiver unit is turning your heating on and off by pushing that button. So you push the button, check your heating has come on and then push the button again and that should turn your heating off. And just remember when you install the receiver unit, it should be 300 millimeters. That's one foot away from the boiler case or any other metal objects. Now, something that's really hard to do and I've installed them closer than that before and they still worked absolutely fine, but that's what it says in the instructions that you should be looking to do. Now the units are connected, we'll go through its operation. Now just to go over the programmer briefly, obviously on the front here you've got the display, you've got the room temperature showing now, which is obviously showing 26.5 degrees. It's showing it's that hot because I'm holding this unit and it's making it hot and it's thinking that it's hotter in here than it actually is. And it's showing uh, the time, which is then 15.22. Now like I said, you can change that time to a 12 hour time in the parameters and I'll show you how to do that later. So we open it up and then we got our three buttons on the bottom and our temperature up and down plus and minus on the side here. Now, uh, before you can make any changes, you have to push any button to make the display light up. So you push that and then you can light the display up and then we can make changes. Obviously here, like I said, plus and minus, it says there. Then we've got the off button here. We've got the auto and a manual button here and we've got the menu here. Now the program does come with a preset timer um, so you can just use that in auto or you can set it yourself. I'll show you how to set that in just a minute, but I'll first just go through what the other buttons do. On and off, pretty straightforward. Press the button, that's off, and that will then turn your central heating off until you push this button again to turn it back on again. Okay, so we push it again, and then it comes back to whether it's in auto or manual. Obviously auto manual, pretty straightforward again. You push the button, it goes to manual. And in manual, you just set the temperature and then whatever you set it to, it will run at that until you change it again. So 24 hours a day, it's just gonna keep on running until you change the temperature or put the temperature up or down. Okay, so that's the way manual works. I just thought I'd add some of my older customers. They just keep their program in manual and they just carry the program around with them. They take it up to bed and they turn the temperature down when they don't want the heating on. And then when they get up, they just turn that temperature back up again. And if that's the way it works for you and that keeps you nice and warm, then that's fine. I always say whatever works for you is the best option. And then so we're gonna take it back out of manual and back into auto. Now, any time of the day, if you're feeling a little cold whilst you're in auto, you can just come to the programmer, you can press this plus button and then take the temperature up to a temperature where you feel comfortable and that will override the auto setting. 
it would then stay at that until it gets to its next time setting, where it will then revert back to that setting. Okay, and likewise, if you wanted to put the temperature down, you could then push this button and that will take the temperature down. And again, it'll stay at that until it gets to its next time setting. Now we can also add a timer to this. So if you're at home, for instance, in the morning and then your heating is due to be off all day, but you only want the heating on for a short length of time, you can press the up button like that, the plus button here to 30 degrees like that. And then we can push this button here and that will add one hour to our time setting. See, it says plus one H and that will count down for one hour and then it will revert back to the programmer again. The backlight has now gone off, but you can see the display is showing you it's still got the plus one hour. So that's how you know you set it on one hour. And then in a couple of seconds, it will change back to the standby display. The only downside I will say is once it changes back to that display, you can't tell if you've got that one hour set. You also cannot tell if you're in auto or in manual. And that's one thing I would like to see different on this display. The reason I don't like that is if you change your programmer to manual and you forgot you changed it, you could just glance at your timer before you went to bed, think it's going to turn off and then you wake up in the middle of the night and you realize you left it in manual and your heating's still running. So that's probably my only criticism of this programmer. Also, this timer function only allows you to add one hour. You could always use this function also to turn the temperature down for one hour. So now we covered the plus and minus buttons, the on off button, the manual and auto. Then we just got the menu here and we push this button here. That takes us into the menu and the menu has this symbol here, which is the program. And we've also got settings to change the date and the time. If we push the plus here, it will take us to where we can then just set the time and the date again. But we already set those in when we started the programmer up. But I'll just show you if we go into those so you can set the year, you can set the month the day, the time and the minutes. OK, and that just goes round and round and you can adjust those. We then push the back button if you need to come out of that. And then we are back to the normal menu. Now, the T3R also has a lock function, which can be quite useful uh, in certain circumstances. Now, to set that, there's nothing on the display telling us how to set it. So you need to remember how to set it and how to unset it. But first of all, to set it, you just need to light the display up as usual. So just push any button. The display lights up. And now we push these two buttons for four to five seconds. One, two, three, four. Maybe about four or five seconds. And then you can see a padlock has appeared in this top corner here. See that little padlock? And it's now locked. And so you cannot adjust anything with these three buttons here. See, nothing is changing. But we can still adjust the temperature. So you can turn the temperature down, and we could turn the temperature up like that. And obviously that would then allow you someone to put the heating on or to put the heating off, but not make any adjustments to the settings. And obviously you can see this is set in manual, so you can do exactly the same in auto. So you just press this to unlock it. One, two, three, four, maybe about four or five seconds. Change it to auto, lock the unit again. One, two, three, four, and now it's locked. And like I said, you've got the padlock back here and now it's in auto. So it's going to run the central heating program so the person can still adjust the temperature up and down if they need to during the day. But the program is going to keep on working, but they cannot make any adjustments down here, which can be useful if you've got someone who may be not so good with the controls to keep pushing the wrong buttons and messing things up. That could be a little handy feature in this particular programmer. To unlock it again, we just come to unit and we just press these two buttons again for four to five seconds. Two, three, four, five, and there we go. And that's saying saving. And now the lock symbol's gone away, and then we can make adjustments here. So off, on, manual, auto. Okay, so that's how the lock function works. Now the programmer does come with a preset timer or schedule whichever you want to call it and if you look in the book you'll see as it shows you there all the preset timings for the day 
So let's push this button again to take us to the program where we can now program the uh, central heating. So this is the timer or the schedule. Obviously you wanna change the schedule. So we're gonna press tick. Now it asks us, do we want to change Monday to Friday? Well, yes, we will want to change Monday to Friday, but uh, it, just so you know, in advanced settings in the parameters, you can change this setting from a Monday to Friday and a Saturday and Sunday to just a one day programmer. So you would then be able to set every day differently or the same even, but the default setting is Monday to Friday and a Saturday and Sunday. But now we're going to go into the Monday to Friday setting by pressing tick. That'll take you to this screen where we set the time and the temperature that we want the first time setting at. And you can see along here, you've got P1, P2, P3, and P4. Now those are the times of the day. So you've got four time settings during the day, which we can adjust. So we want to adjust the first one. So that's the time in the morning you want your heating to come on. So when we push the tick button, it starts flashing for the time for 6.30. Now I want my heating to come on at seven o'clock. So I'm gonna push the plus arrow, take it to seven o'clock there. And then I'll press tick. And then I can then adjust the temperature. So I can now set the temperature to whatever I want in the morning. Now it's nice to be a bit warmer. So I'm gonna set mine to 22 degrees. Now you can obviously set that higher if you like it a bit warmer or cooler if you don't want it so warm. But I'm setting mine to 22. Okay, then I'll press tick again. It saves that setting. And then it'll go to P2 where we can set our off period or the temperature down. So I'm gonna press tick. And then at eight o'clock, I'm gonna change that to nine. So when the kids go to school, and then I press tick. And now we can set the temperature. Now, this is where I find people sometimes get a little bit confused. Uh, and I have a lot of questions about setting these programmers now. Now, if you leave that temperature at 16 degrees and you want the heating to be off, if the house goes below that temperature, then the heating will come on. So you do need to put this temperature down if you don't want your heating to come on. So I always set mine right down low at 10 degrees. So I put that right down at 10 degrees like that. So the house would have to go to 10 degrees before the heating comes on. But if you leave this temperature up, say at 18 or something, then if the house goes below 18 degrees, then the heating will come on. Now that's great if you're at, you're at home and you, you, you want the heating maybe to, to just to keep the house warm. Uh, but um, if you don't want to be on at all and you're at work or something, then you want to set that temperature down low. Now, if my wife was at home, um, then I might say the size to set it at 19, say. When the house uh, dropped temperature and it went below 19, the heating would then come on and just keep the house ticking over so it doesn't get really cold. But like I say, no one's going to be at home, so I'm going to put that temperature right down low to 10 degrees. And I'm going to press tick again, like that, and then it takes us to our, our next time setting, which would be the afternoon setting, or whenever you want to come on in the afternoon or evening. So I want to set that, so press tick. It's saying 18, obviously that's a bit late. I want it to come on a bit earlier, say so 4 o'clock. So take it to 16, press tick. And again, I want the house to be fairly warm, so I'm gonna set that to 22. I'm gonna press tick again. And then we got our last time set, when I want the heating to go off. So yes, I wanna set that. Then we set that time. I'm gonna put that to uh, 10 o'clock and press tick again. And again, at night, I don't want my heating to come on. If your house goes below 16 degrees, then the heating will come on. And obviously I don't want my heating on at night because I'm all wrapped up in bed and nice and warm. So I'm gonna put that temperature right down to 10 degrees and that will also save energy. So press tick again. And that's the day set up. So that's Monday to Friday, all being the same time. We can now set the weekend to be different. So if you wanna set that, we then press the obviously the tick again and then on the saturday and sunday on the weekend i'm not working i want my times to be a bit different so i'm going to press tick again and we're going to change it so i had the first one at seven i'm going to change this now to 7 30. so i have bring the heating on and then press tick again and then again i'm going to set this uh exactly the same i'm going to set my temperature in the morning to 22. And then it said I'm a little bit slower on the weekend, so I'm now going to 
press tick again, set the time, I'm going to set that to 10 o'clock, like that, and press tick. And I don't want my house to go really cold on the weekend, so I'm going to leave that at, say, uh, say 20 degrees. So then my house will be warm all day long because I'm at home all day, and it's obviously winter time. Then in the afternoon again, I then set that to 4 o'clock. When I want my heating to come back on again, I'm going to set that to 22, press tick. And then one last one at night again, when I go to bed, I don't want my heating on as usual. Okay, we can see that's at 2300, 11 o'clock. That's a bit late, I feel. So I'm going to change that to 1030, press tick. And then I'm going to set that temperature right down low again. At 10 degrees, press tick. And that's a Saturday and Sunday setting set. So that's now your week set. And then whenever we're in auto, it will then run that program. So the T3R also has some additional parameters which we can set. So things like we could change the time here from a 24 hour time to a 12 hour time. We can change the schedule from a five and two day schedule to a one day schedule. So you can set every day differently. Now to do that is fairly straightforward, but we do need the uh, installation manual because in the installation manual, there is the list of parameters. So when you look down the parameters, it tells you what to set. And I know that if we go to 11 CL, that is a time and you can change the time from a 24 hour time to a 12 hour time by changing the setting from zero to a, a one. If you want to change the um, schedule, uh, I believe that's that one there. So six SO changes it from a five and two, as it says there, to a one day programmer. So let's just do those. Now to go into the parameters is fairly straightforward. We just push any button to light up the display. There we are, the display is lit up. Now we push this button here and this one here for three seconds. One, two, three. And now we've gone into the additional settings. So to change the schedule, we scroll along to the six. As it says there, six SO, and then we change the two to a one. So we press that. We change it to a minus to one. We then press tick, and then we go to the twenty-four hour time, which was eleven CL. We change that to a one, and press tick. And then we kind of come out of that, like that, by pressing the back arrow. We'll now see in the display, it has changed. So we have a seven day calendar. So we have the days showing just there, saying one to seven on the days. We now just need to wait for the display to change to its standby screen. And then we'll see the clock will then be a 12 hour clock showing AM and PM. And there we go, we can see the clock has now changed from a 24 hour clock to a 12 hour clock showing AM and PM. And now when we go into schedule, we should be able to press here. We go into a program, press tick. And now we can see it says Monday. So now it's just flashing day one, Monday, and then we can go through and we can change each day separately. So press tick. And then we can go into Monday setting and we can change Monday. Let's just go back. So we can now also change Tuesday. We could change Wednesday, Thursday. So we can scroll through and change each day individually. So they have their own settings. Something else you can do now is you can copy days and you can select different days and make them the same as that day. Let me show you what I mean. So you can see on the display here, it says copy. Now that allows you to copy all the days across. So once you finish finish setting Monday up, so let's just go into that, set Monday. So we're gonna set Monday, and uh, uh, let's just change that to, let's just change it to uh, six. And we'll put the temperature up to 22, press okay. And we're just going to press OK for these for now, just so I can show you quickly what you do. And then when you finish setting the day, so we're on our last time setting, and that'll be the last one of the day. And we're happy with that. Let's just put the temperature down just for the sake of it. OK, press tick. And then that is that day saved. 
So that's your Monday set. So you could then go to your Monday setting and you can press this copy day button, press copy, and then you can copy and it says there two, and then you choose the day you want you want to copy it to. So you could copy it to whatever day. So those being the numbers of the week. So seven. So obviously Monday is already set. So now it's come with two. So you could copy it to two. So you press tick. And that's saving so that now Monday and Tuesday are the same. And then you can copy it to three. Um, and then press tick again. Yes, I want to copy it to three. Okay, so that's how that function works if you need to uh, set your days differently. Okay, so that's the difference when you set this programmer. And we go back again. And we go back again. And go back again. And that's the display as we see it now. Now here's an additional function you might want to know about. You can delete time periods. So if we go into menu by clicking the menu button, then we go into program, we set program by pressing tick. Then we go uh, set Monday and Friday, press tick. And then we've got our time periods here. So we've got our 6.30 in the morning. Now if we scroll along to time period number two, say we don't want that setting there. We can then press and hold this button for three seconds. One, two, three and then you get this symbol here come up now if we press tick that will then delete that time period there okay so then we could go to number three as well and we could delete that period as well so go one two three that's gone now then we need to say that tick to say yes we want that deleted and now that's gone and then we can just tick our final ones so 10 30 so we're going to just say okay for that okay for that okay for that okay we're not going to do saturday and sunday so just go back back and back okay and now if we go into our menu now we go to check that we go into program press tick and then we go to monday and friday press tick and we've got first time setting and our second time setting you can now see is blank so there's nothing in there our third time setting is blank and then we've got that time setting there on the evening so we just basically deleted those two in the middle now i can't see why you really want to do that because you can just set those to be the same time and temperature as as the rest of the of the day but if you want to do it that way you you can do and uh, maybe that'd be useful if you've got an older person again who's you just want them the heat to come on in the morning stay on all day and then go off on the on the evening but like i said you can just set those to the set temperature and you can do this whether you set the program in seven day week or a five and two day week to bring those time settings back again you just go into those uh again so we press tick it says program monday to friday yes we're going to scroll along to number two which is zero and then we just press and hold this button one two three that brings the settings back again and we press tick and then we can just go through again to the next time setting see it's saving that and the number three is still blank so again we're going to turn that back on again press and hold comes back on press ok press ok press ok that's saved and now when we scroll back through you'll see that the time settings have come back again so that's a useful little function maybe i'm not quite sure why you want to use it but it is there if you need to use it now in the parameters there are some other useful settings which you could set up depending on what you want to use the program for so a couple of them i thought might be useful if you've got an older person and you, uh, you you don't want them to get too cold and you don't want them to get too hot now as you go through the parameters you can see there is uh, several down here now you can set the lower limit and you can also set the upper limit so that's basically how cold the program would go and how hot it would go so again uh, i'm thinking if you had the programmer locked so that uh, no one could mess around with it apart from put the temperature up and down then you could set an upper temperature limit uh, so it could only go to say 23 or 24 degrees and you could put a lower temperature limit of say 20 degrees if you've got an old person who's in the property and you don't want to get too cold you don't want to get too hot 
and you don't want them to mess up the program for settings and again uh, so you can obviously just scroll through these and go th through them if you want to there are a few others which which might be useful to you um, you got the backlit turn that all off I, I don't see why you want to turn it off if anything I'd like to make that longer uh, obviously we've done the clock daylight saving you don't want to turn that off uh, temperature offset and that's another one which, which might you be interested in so the temperature offset now I've sometimes come across it where people have said to me the programmer does not read the same as my iPhone or my Android phone well you can then adjust this in, in here and make the change the temperature apply plus or minus three degrees so then you could make the display say the same as your display um, so that can be useful um, obviously you can then go through a couple of others now if you do do a factory reset it does reset it and it does lose it lose its bindings so just remember that you will need to rebind this unit and that brings me on to binding so in this book here there is nothing to tell you about binding so if you lose your signal with the uh, uh, with your programmer you have no way of rebinding it now luckily I know how to rebind this unit and I will show you how to rebind it in a separate video uh, altogether so I'll leave the link here so you can learn how to rebind your units so if you lose your signal and they no longer talk to each other then that's the way you get them to reconnect by using a binding now for the engineers you can also set a service reminder or even for yourself maybe so you just want to know how long it's been since you have your boiler serviced because the years do go past really quickly so you can set a service reminder so it come up in the display telling you when your boiler is due for a service okay so this is the receiver unit so now you would usually screw this to the wall but i always tend to wire it up first of all because it makes life a way easier to to wire it in now um it's fairly straightforward you, you've got these nice little pictures again here so obviously this is fairly straightforward 230 volts so this will like wire straight into the mains you just get your live neutral and your earth and obviously you would take these from your boiler supply or from your heating control supply so whenever you turn your heating controls off this unit goes off also and then you've got the switch live on on the other side now this is a uh, volt free okay as it shows in the picture there it says from 24 volts to 230 volts this is literally just a, a switch it's just an on off switch and it shows you a picture here as you see so you've got a in and also you got picture for boiler obviously in the flames and when those two uh, meet together it turns your boiler on so a thermostat is just a switch there's nothing more fancy than a switch joining two wires together now I'm just going to wire this in so that we can see what happens I do have a more in-depth video on how to replace an existing receiver unit and also how to wire into a wiring center where you have loft tanks and a hot water tank and mid position valve to watch that video just click the link in the description below okay so I've got a bit of cable here I use for testing things and I'm just going to wire this into here now don't make like these too long you don't want bits of I see I see where people they strip these these right back okay and and you have loads of what you don't want that okay you you want to, when you put this in you should you should have it covered so you don't see any any copper here's the perfect example of what not to do and here's the wiring after I've corrected it okay so make sure you do that don't strip them back too far Okay, so we just got the live done there. I'm gonna put the neutral in. Neutral in there like that. And then we got the earth. Now the, obviously this is a plastic unit. There's no actual earth. This is just a point to, to isolate the earth wire. Well, whereas before the old units didn't have that. So there's a nice little added feature. It just gives you somewhere to put that, that earth wire. Uh, because you should always have an earth wire when you have 230 volts to protect the wiring. I believe that is a bylaw or a building regulation. Don't quote me on that, but I do know it is supposed to have a wire. Now you can see there's a bit of, there's a bit of a, a copper show in there. That's not ideal. I, I like to see that list a little bit further in. So I'm just going to push that a little bit further in. And there we go. So that's where this clamp comes in okay the clamp you may not know you've got a thick side and, and a thin side so if your wires are pretty thick maybe using a five core wire then uh, you might want to use th this side so you put that down on on the wire or if you've got some thinner wire then you want to use this side so i'm going to use this hole here because we're also going to need to run another wire in to run the boiler 
So there we go, that's that wire in, in there. And you can see that's that's a little loose there. Okay, that's because I've, I haven't used the thick side. So really, I wanna use the thicker side so that if this wire does dangle, it's not gonna slip that down through. So that's why you have this different plate here. So I'm just gonna swap that around. You can see that's, that's a lot better now. That's nice and tight. When I pull that, does, that does not slip out at all, okay? So I could do that a little tighter, but I'm not going to, because obviously this is just for demonstration purposes. And you don't want these wires too, too tight. You want to make sure that there's a, a little leeway on them, because you don't want these wires getting pulled out of their holes. Now you can see I've just put the live neutral and earth in, in here, but obviously we still need the switch wire. So, I mean, if I was going to wire this in, which I'm not today, I would have another wire which will come in here and then that one will come up here and wire into those two positions there. But I'm not going to do that because I'm, I'm not creating any, any switch today. I'm just wiring this in so you can see how the programmer operates. So this unit here now just goes on here. It, you could fit it on the top first of all. Obviously now you then screw this to the wall so it's fixed. And then we can then put this unit on, line it up, fold it down, and it folds down nice and easy. It goes down easier, in my opinion, than the old CM series. And just screws on that. That screws is nice and loose. Okay, so that's now ready to go. So hopefully now you know all about the T3R programmer. Right, that's about it then. So I do hope my video has been helpful to you. If you're looking to buy one of these programmers, like I said, all the links are in the description below, which will take you straight to all the programmers I have mentioned. And if you want to watch my next video about the T4, then of course you can click on the link right here. And of course, if you find this video helpful, then don't forget, click on that thumbs up and that will also help others to find the video. You can click on subscribe if you enjoy my video. And of course, if you want to receive a notification the next time I upload a help video, then click on that bell. And of course, share the video with your friends. Don't forget, if you want to buy me a cup of coffee, then you can click on my toolbox fund. And that'd be really appreciated. Bye for now. And I'll see you next time.